Authorist oneness is a state of consciousness that many humans find challenging to access or fully understand. Please, can you explain exactly what consciousness is and the relationship to oneness? Hmm. Well, in terms of what consciousness is, the expansiveness of the question answers itself because consciousness itself is everything. It is all questions that you wish to ask. It is all answers that you wish to receive. Of course, in terms of consciousness itself, it contains the universe. It contains the planetary systems. It contains this solar system that your planet Earth is within. It contains the Earth and it contains humanity and everything that is on this planet. That is consciousness. Consciousness itself is energy, is the totality from the infinite high of the frequency of consciousness to the infinite low of the frequency of consciousness containing absolutely everything. That is oneness, that is the totality in one state encapsulating everything. And the issue that occurs for human beings when they are thinking about are they oneness of course, they are oneness, but they have to understand the nature of themselves as a vibrational frequency within that vast range of oneness, within that vast size of consciousness. And then, of course, there is the mechanism that all human beings desire to understand so that they can make sense of their life or their life purpose here on this planet. And it is that consciousness at the vibrational frequency that they are occupying the human physical body flows through the physical body to animate it, to observe what is occurring within the totality of consciousness, within the cosmos. So it is understanding the nature of the experience of itself through the human body. That is what consciousness and oneness is. So how can humans access a state of consciousness? Well, they are a state of consciousness, but it depends on which aspect they are coming from. As we have said sometimes before, there is the human state, which is a vibrational frequency within the extent of the totality of consciousness. And then there is the totality of consciousness itself. Now, depending on the nature of the person who is asking that as a question and their conscious awareness or the awareness of consciousness, they can tell when they are observing whether they are coming from that, from the human vibrational frequency, or whether they are coming from that of the totality of consciousness vibrational frequency, we would say parameters, the infinite parameters of the high and the low. So it is a matter of being conscious about what it is that you are doing in your day, and then understanding whether it is from the human vibrational frequency context that you are, or whether it is from the overall universal or cosmic consciousness that you are also. Depends where you put your point in time. So if you are, for instance, eating and you are feeding the body, then you are in your human vibrational frequency. But if you are out there in the world spreading love and that vibrational frequency throughout the world, then you are the consciousness, the totality of consciousness. You have moved from the human vibrational frequency to the conscious vibrational frequency. And that is what humans do each and every day. They move from the totality to that which is the human body and then back again and then back again. And it is part of the play between being human and being a universal energy or being consciousness. So what would be the potential for humans who have reached that state of conscious awareness? Hmm. What is important is that they pass on that energy because they have reached that vibrational frequency where they can shift between the totality and that which is the physical human body. They can do that through free will of their own accord and they can then begin to explain to people how that is part of the way that the universe works, how it is that they can then move, raising their vibrational frequency from the human vibrational frequency range into the cosmic vibrational frequency range and what is the impact of doing that, not just on themselves but also on humanity. So a lot have been, has been spoken about recently um, in relationship to intention, mm. setting your intention, how does that relate to having a conscious awareness and mm. the possibilities that may arise as a result? Mm. Well, first of all, each individual human being has to ask themselves the question, 
who and what am I? They are the fundamental questions that need to arise within the consciousness of the human being to be able to then begin to access that which is the greater field of consciousness. In terms of intention, we sometimes talk about, you and I, of the manifestation process. It doesn't matter whether you call it that or not, but the intention part, which is the second part of becoming or attracting that which you desire and then intend, is the intention that you hold to be the greater consciousness field or the, the greater vibrational frequency. In that, you can then desire and intend anything that you desire because it is within the context of everything that you create. And if you, for instance, stay within that which is the human vibrational frequency without any desire or intention, then you will simply be attracting and not attracting without consciousness. Mm. So it is important to have that desire and intention. Mm. So how can humans access that place of consciousness or direct their consciousness to one place or another um, and also continue their journey as human beings remaining in that state of consciousness? Mm. Well, firstly we would say it is not possible to remain in that state permanently. Mm. Of course, you understand in terms of what is the paradox that you are it, mm. you are the totality of consciousness, but your focus or your focal point is that within the, what you would say is perhaps the limited range of being a human being. In order to expand out of that, to understand the totality of you, but also to be part human, part universe, and to be able to play between the two, you need to remove yourself from that which is the human confusion, in terms of that which is the vibrational frequency of humanity and how humanity is desiring each and every individual part or e individual person in humanity to live the life that they desire, not what they, the individual, desire. It is part of removing yourself from the confusion, removing yourself from the energy of humanity and then moving back into that which is the heart. The heart is the place to start. <laughs> there is a poem for you. <laughs> but what we are saying is, is that once you remove yourself from that energy of humanity, you then have a clear space. And whether you do that in meditation or whether you are in the middle of the street doing what you do as a human being and close your eyes, shut off your hearing and go into the center of yourself, then you can begin to understand how you can connect immediately and we would say, perhaps on a permanent basis, hmm? when you are understanding that you are it permanently, you can access that which is the totality, or perhaps you might call it superconsciousness. It is up to you, but it is through meditation, it is through standing still, it is through removing yourself from that which is how society desires you to be, and for you to be how you desire to be. I know you've mentioned to us in the past that it's a state of being the observer of your life. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that seems to me to be a useful practice mm. for people to start this process if they're not yet familiar with meditation, for mm. example. Well, it is because, of course, moving out into the observer position is immediately raising your vibrational frequency and is immediately connecting you to that which is the superconsciousness. Mm. Of course, the observer can only come forward and be recognized when it is out of that, which is the day-to-day -day way that you live your life course as we also have discussed as you practice being the observer and you become the observer more and more what happens is that you can then move back into the human realm move back into the human experience but still remain being the observer so that is the other way that you mm. can do it if people are entering this state through meditation what emotions or feelings might they experience mm. well what is important is that it is not an easy journey to take so whether there is a health warning on it or mm -hmm. something like that, once you begin that journey, what occurs, of course, from an energetic perspective is there is a releasing of any trapped energies, as we have discussed, any trapped energies that are held within the physical body that need not be there. So when you allow that which is the energies to arise out of the body from previous experiences, then you will feel the emotions and feelings that were attached to that experience as if you were in the experience itself. So you need to be aware, consciously aware, that that will be a process that you move through. Because what you are doing is you are traveling to that clear space through 
all of the experiences that you have gathered within your lifetime at this point. So really people could look at that as an opportunity to sort of clear the decks mm. um, and become more and more familiar with their true essence, this state of oneness. Mm, that is thought. true. Because what occurs, although, of course, is that human beings rush through that which is the meditation process so they do not have to deal with the necessary release of the experiences and the feelings and the emotions trying to get to that place of stillness as fast as they can but it is a practice it is not something that you do once and you are it it is something that you do each and every day perhaps for longer periods to start with but as you become practiced at it you can do it for 30 seconds in a day and immediately go back to that place but there will be a releasing over time, as you transition to that place, there will be a releasing over time of the feelings and emotions of experiences that you have had. So if there's a releasing of these feelings and emotions, what would you recommend people do when they are suddenly faced with new feelings or, or issues? Hmm. Well, in terms of that, there is the, what we would recommend is that you stay with it because it is. Once you move through it, it does not repeat itself. Once it is released, back out into the universal field, stay with it. Of course, if you feel that you cannot move through these particular experiences by yourself, then it is important that you seek help from, whether it is therapists or whether it is a friend, whether it is your family. It's important to be supported through that process because it will not be an easy journey if there are experiences that you have not faced and that you have not released and that the charge within those experiences is too much for you to bear either on a physical or mental level. Can you explain the long-term benefit then if someone's going to take this um, challenging journey? Hmm. Well the long-term benefit of course is the raising of your own vibrational frequency and moving from that which is the fear-based way of being in the world to that which is the love-based way of being in the world and that anything that then occurs within the nature of your life is not seen as something to be afraid of but is seen as something to embrace with love and compassion to bring into your life take that in terms of energy from it what you need then pass it back out without it actually impacting the nature of how you move up and down the vibrational frequency of your uniqueness so there really is a strong motivating factor here mm, to... there is a compelling factor mm. because of course not are you only just increasing your own vibrational frequency when you imagine that you are perhaps the only human being on this planet then that is what you would be doing but because there are seven billion of you then you are affecting the nature of the magnetic field of the earth itself and of humanity so you are putting something back into humanity rather than something back into yourself and presumably you also have the benefit of feeling as though you are part of everything. Mm, of course, mm. and that is what you are part <laughs> of. <laughs> Thank you, all three. <laughs> You're welcome.